Hey everybody, uh, Mr. MathBlog here. This is a lesson on independent and dependent variables uh, using tables and graphs. Okay, so here's our, our common course strand for our most groovy math teachers. And then our question here is how can we identify independent and dependent uh, variables or quantities from tables and graphs? Okay, so here we go. So identifying independent and dependent quantities from a table. So, so there's many real world situations that involve two variable quantities in which one quantity totally depends on the other quantity. So the, the quantity that, uh, uh, that depends on the other quantity is called the dependent variable. Okay, and so the other one's going to be called the independent variable. Okay, so the quantity that, de uh, that the, it, it depends on is called the independent variable. So for, here's an example. A freight train moves at a constant speed. So the distance y in miles that a train has traveled after x hours shown in the table. So after zero hours, the train went zero. After one hour, the train went 50. After two hours, went 100. Sorry, it's kind of disappearing. After three, it went 150. Okay, so it looks like the distance down here is dependent on the time that's going across right there. We'll have to remember that next time. That it disappears. So what are the two quantities in this situation? Okay, let me slide that up into some other questions right here. So what are the two quantities in this situation? Okay, so my quantities that I see are, are I'm going to grab this one because so you can see it. So are the time and the distance right here. So the time is in hours and the distance is in miles. So the two quantities are time and distance right there. Which of these quantities depends on the other? Well, we sort of talked about that, okay? So um, uh, distance here depends on how much time it traveled. So if it traveled two hours, it went 100 miles. Three hours, it went 150 miles. So, so here the distance is dependent on the time. So which of these quantities depends on the other? The distance depends on the time. So what I like to do is answer this question uh, next, you guys, is this. Uh, which one is the dependent variable? Okay, the distance is the de dependent variable. So that means that the time is the independent variable. Okay, so your book likes to do it a little bit backwards. So the time is the independent. And so so the distance is the dependent. So because distance depends on the time. How much time did it travel? And that's how much distance it went. So how far does the train travel each hour? Okay. All right. So the train travels, it looks like uh, 50 miles an hour. So after one, it's 50. After two, another 50. After three, another 50. So it's going up 50, 50, 50. Okay. So 50 miles per hour. Okay. So the relationship between the distance traveled by the train and the time in hours, it can be represented by an equation uh, in two variables, okay? So, so here we have uh, distance equals uh, the distance traveled per hour, which is 50 miles per hour, times the time in hours. And we're going to let this be our x. So we can say here's y equals 50 times x, okay? And that's what we're going to do. Y equals 50 times x, okay? So, so describe uh, the value of the independent variable. Uh, I'm sorry, how the value, value of the independent variable is related to the value of the dependent variable, okay? All right, so here we have um, uh, distance equals um, uh, 50 times x. So so the value of y equals 50 times the value of x, something like that, okay? So the value of y is always 50 times the value of x. What are the units of the independent variables and the dependent variables, okay? So we uh, the independent variables were um, uh, in hours. How many hours were they went? And the dependent variables were in miles. So the distance uh, depended on how many hours it went. Okay, so a rate using this equation, the rate is always how much per? Have you ever used the word per? Okay, so I tell my students, you ever see rate? Look for the word per. Here it is, per right here. So distance traveled is going to be 50 miles per hour. So that's what the, the rate is, 50 miles per hour. Okay, all right, so identifying independent and dependent variables, quantities from a graph. Okay, so here's a graph right here. So in the first activity, we used a table to represent a relationship between independent, uh, which in that case was time, and dependent variables, which was distance. We're going to do the same units instead of time and distance. We're going to use a uh, 
how much clay was used, okay? So we can also use a graph to show this relationship. So here, we have this uh, graph right here, okay? And so this graph represents, okay, down here is our x-axis right here, and here is our, here is our y-axis right here. So the x-axis says clay bought by the teacher, and LB min means pounds, okay? And over here, you gotta turn your head sideways. Sorry, clay available for the class. So it looks like down here, the clay bought by the teacher, she bought or he bought zero, um, zero pounds. So the class already had 20 pounds of clay to start with. So if the teacher buys, looks like these are going in 10 pound increments. So if she buys 10 pounds, then right here, then the class has 30 pounds to uh, available to um, uh, do for the art class. Now, the reason why this is connected right here is a straight line is the teacher, it looks like the teacher can buy not just 10 pounds, but they just have 10 pounds and 20 pounds and 30 pounds, but he or she could buy five pounds. And so if we bought five pounds, we can go up to the line right there and it looks like the class is gonna have 25 pounds right there. Okay, anyway, so let's go back up here. So an art teacher has 20 pounds of clay but wants to buy more clay for, for her class. So it is a she. So the amount of clay X, so the, the, here's the amount of clay X purchased by the teacher and the amount of clay Y that's available for the class right here, um, uh, right here, uh, are shown on this graph right here, okay? All right, so, so if the teacher buys 10 more pounds, uh, how many pounds of clay uh, will be available for the class? So if the teacher buys 10 more pounds, go up here, it looks like the, it's going to be 30 pounds of clay for the class right there, okay? All right, and then um, uh, if the class has a total of 50 pounds, okay, so the class, here's the class right here. The, what's available for the class is a total of 50 pounds, so we're going to go up here. How much pounds of the clay did the teacher buy? So use the graph. So we'll go over here to 50 and go here, and it looks like the teacher purchased 30 pounds of clay right there. So, okay, so find the point on the graph with the y coordinate of 50, which is what we did. We went up here to to 50 and then we found the x coordinate right here which gives us how many pounds of it the teacher purchased okay so the teacher bought 30 pounds of clay all right so um uh same same situation i just kind of shrink things up to answer the next set of questions what are the two quantities in this situation okay so the quantities are um clay bought by the teacher in pounds and here is clay that's available for the class that's also in, in pounds. So the amount of clay bought by the teacher and the amount of clay that's available for the class. Which of these quantities depends on the other, okay? So um, uh, does, does the amount of clay that's available for the class depend on how much teacher uh, bought or does uh, the amount of the teacher bought depend on how much is available for the class? Okay, so the, the clay that's available for the class totally depends on how much more the teacher bought, okay? So, so uh, the amount of clay that's available to the class depends on the amount of clay that was bought by the teacher. So what that means is down here, this is our independent variable. Let's, let me go back and put that back there. Okay, so this is our independent variable right here, okay? I'm sorry, our dependent. No, it's not. The amount of uh, clay that's available for the class totally depends on the amount of clay bought by the teacher. So this is the dependent variable. So right down here, which is the dependent variable? The clay available for the class. I like to answer that first. So this one's going to be the other one. The clay that's bought by the teacher is the independent variable. Okay. All right. So. Uh, the re relationship between the amounts of clay purchased by the teacher and the amount of clay available for the class can be represented by an equation in two variables, okay? So the amount of clay that's available uh, for, uh, for the class equals the current amount of clay. Well, the current amount of clay before the teacher started buying it right here was was this 20 right here. The, the class already had 20 pounds, and if the teacher wants the class to have more clay, she has to purchase more clay to make it available to the class right here. Okay, so the amount of clay, we're going to call this Y, equals, notice that says Y right there, equals the current amount of clay 
which is 20. And then so every amount of clay that she purchases is going to add to that. So, um, so we're going to get, um, oops, sorry, uh, we're going to get the uh, y equals 20 plus uh, however much the, the teacher purchases right there. All right. So I uh, just shrunk that up so I can uh, fit some more questions in here. So describe in words how the value of the independent variable is related to the value of the dependent variable, okay? So the value of y is always 20 units greater than the value of x because they started with 20 pounds. And so however much um, uh, the teacher buys, and they have that uh, that's added to the 20 pounds to the class right there, okay? Hope that makes sense, okay? All right, so in that situation, the same units are used for the independent and dependent variables, pounds of clay, pounds of uh, uh, that she bought, and that pounds that that's available. So how is that different from the uh, the train? Okay, well, the train was distance and time, okay? So the other situation involved two different kind of units, which was miles in distance and time, which was in hours right there, okay? So so the last one, which was clay, was they were the same units, pounds of clay bought by the teacher um, uh, that was available for pounds of clay for the class right there, okay? All right, so um, uh, suppose that the clay the teacher buys is available only in 10-pound packages. How would the graph be different from the one that we use, okay? Did I leave a graph? I hope I did. Okay, so, yeah, well, the difference is, this one's kind of hard to explain, you guys, okay? So, um, uh, it's, let, let's say the teacher bought 5 pounds. Well, then they, the class would have 20 pounds plus 5 pounds, or 25 pounds. Let's say that the teacher bought 2 pounds, so the class would have 20 point, 22 point, or 22 pounds, okay? So, um, uh, if, if the teacher could only buy it in 10-pound increments right there, then it would just be uh, 20 pounds, then 30 pounds, then 40 pounds, then 50 pounds, and we wouldn't have a line that connected these dots right there because that would mean that the teacher can't buy it in other units other than 10 pounds right here. Okay, so this graph started off with uh, only 10 pounds, so it was kind of deceptive right there. So, but they can, she could buy uh, 20, you know, she could buy 1.5 pounds, so they'd have 21.5 pounds, and so. So that's why this, the, all these points are connected in the original problem. But if she can only buy it by 10 uh, pound increments, then it's only going to go from here to here to here to here and so on. Okay. All right. I saw some more questions up there. So, so what are the units of the independent variable and what are the units of the dependent variable? So they were both in pounds. How, uh, the independent variable was um, the uh, the teacher, how many pounds she purchased, and the and the dependent variable was how many pounds were available for the class. So that was also in pounds. Okay, those are the units. All right. So describing relationships between independent and dependent variables. So. Thinking about how one quantity depends on another helps us identify which quantity is independent and which quantity is dependent, okay? Typically, you guys, uh, if you're given um, uh, a graph, you guys, the variable is usually shown, the independent variable is usually shown on the x-axis, which is the horizontal axis, okay? And what is the horizontal axis, okay? So when we're given a graph, Typically, when we're given a graph, this graph, this axis going left and right is our independent variable. And the graph that goes up and down is our, our dependent variable. So if it went up and down, it would be our dependent variable right there, okay? And then so here, uh, we have uh, we have the, the art class. So this x-axis is our independent variable, the how much clay the teacher bought. And then here, our y-axis is how, uh, our dependent variable, how much clay would be available to, for the class. It was dependent on how much the teacher was going to buy. And if you're given a, uh, a table, you guys, the independent variable is usually the, the top uh, row going across, okay? Or if it's going up and down, if you have a table that goes up and down, it's your left um, column that goes down, okay? So... So we had uh, this table right here, and so this top table was our independent variable, so this was our dependent variable. The distance that train traveled depended on how much time it was traveling right there. Okay, so this was the independent variable because this variable depended on this variable. Okay, so if they give you a graph, independent, dependent. If they give you a table, 
independent, dependent, okay? Almost always, 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 that's what happens. So here we have a table that shows the relationship between two variables, x and y, describe a possible situation of the table that could be represented. The ta uh, describe the independent and dependent variables. Okay, so, so here we have the independent variables right here and the dependent variables right here. So when we start with 0, we have 10. When we start with 1, we have 11. 2 is 12. 3 is 13. Can you see that this is always, this dependent variable is always 10 more than the independent variable? So what kind of situation would be always 10 more than the independent variable? So y is always 10 units greater than the value of x. So here's an example right here. So this table might represent uh, Gina's savings account if each day she has 10 more dollars than the number of days she has been saving. Okay, so so um, uh, so the, the 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 independent variable is is uh, the x, and so it's the number of days she has been adding money to her savings account, and the dependent variable would be uh, the savings after how many days she saved after x days, something like that. Okay, so here's a here's a graph right here. Okay, so this graph uh, typically this is our independent, and this is our dependent right here. So this graph shows the relationship of two variables. Describe a possible situation that the graph could represent. Describe the independent and dependent. Okay, so here when it's 0, we have 0. When it's 1, we have 12. When it's 2, we have 24. When it's 3, we have 36. So can you see that uh, the independent variable is always 12 less than the than the dependent variable or the vice versa would be the value of y is always 12 times the value of x so what always comes in packages of 12 can you guys think of something that comes in packages of 12 like eggs eggs come in packages of 12 so this graph could represent the number of eggs in a carton that each hold 12 eggs so if you had zero cartons you have zero eggs if you have one carton you have 12 eggs Two cartons is 24 eggs. So the independent variable is the number of cartons, and the dependent variable is the number of eggs. So the number of eggs depends on how many cartons there are right there. Okay, so what are the possible situations that the table and the graph that we just explained in these two examples that could represent? Okay, so here's those two examples right there. Okay, so let's go down, uh, let's go to the table right here. So independent variable, remember this is always 10 more, 10 more, 10 more. If it's 3, it's 13 because it's always 10. So maybe for the table, Paul has 10 DVDs and buys one more each day. So the independent variable would be the number of DVDs he buys, and the dependent variable would be uh, uh, how many he, uh, he has after X DVDs. Okay. All right. So and then um, uh, the, the graph part right there from the graph, we can say something else like 12 photos fit on each page of a yearbook. Okay, so the independent variable would be the number of pages. Now the dependent would be the total number of photos. All right, I hope that makes sense, you guys. Just find out which one depends on the other. Like here, for example, Wimpy says, I can eat nine burgers in a week. So how many burgers can he eat in three weeks? So here, the independent variable is the number of weeks, and the dependent variable is the number of burgers. The number of burgers depends on how many weeks he has on that. Okay, hope that makes sense, you guys. Take care.